AK, Stone Bait, or otherwise known as the Devon Coast. I've got the other Navi on it here. Uh, just to orientate yourselves on it, uh, we've got north up. So this is the um, westerly end, which is the bows. Now that is, um, some of this hull has split away, giving you this indication here. So that is just sort of hull and coming to an abrupt end. Uh, this other area here from the bows towards the stern is where all the stone and cement and what have you is all. That's the mound of that. Then you'll get the next larger area which will be the boiler and the engine that's fallen over and then you'll get the stern. And the stern is obviously the easterly end. Seems to be the most, the, the biggest snag point here. It's probably the, the, the bit that stands up the most. So you, uh, everyone seems to be getting their anchors stuck on there. Uh, there's at least five, five anchors there at the moment. Well, too short, I've already had those. Um, and then there's a couple more up at the bows. So I'm assuming it's pretty hard ground round it and it's difficult to um, hold fast. And you're dragging into it as the tide's going out. Jamie's tied in on the bow, and I'm still not entirely sure how the bow is laying in relation to the rest of the ship, uh, which is laying for the most part on its port side. I've dived this many times and never been able to make it nor tail of it. It's quite close to shore and for, well, what seems like 51 weeks of the year, it seems visibility is mostly one metre or less. So it was quite nice to actually see it for a change. It was April 1905, W. Harkis and Sons launched from their Middlesbrough yard, this handsomely modelled steamer. 55 metres long, she was able to carry 950 tonnes of cargo in a light draft, and was able to unload in less than six hours. Triple expansion engine by McColl and Pollock, who also made the three furnished boiler, that pushed the Devon coast along at ten and a half knots. A patent donkey boiler was also fitted by a company called Blake's. I'm just disentangling our shot line at the moment so we can actually get it back after the dive. I'll just go down and have a little look around inside the, uh, inside the bow section. The vessel was named Devon Coast as she left the ways by Miss Joan Harkis of Levenside, Stokesley. Uh, she was William Harkis's four-year-old daughter. William Harkis started out as an apprentice engineer for Blair & Co and then another well-known shipbuilding company, Railton Dixon & Co, before going on to his father's firm, who was also W. Harkis. He was elected a member of the Middlesbrough Town Council in 1901 then appointed mayor in 19, 1911. He died at Levenside in Stokesley in 1937. I did actually find myself driving past Stokesley quite recently, so I did uh, stop off to see if I could find him or his daughter Joan, who'd married Lancelot Barker at St Peter's Church in Stokesley, but uh, I couldn't find any trace of any of them up there. While we're on a part of the bow, I do actually recognise now they the uh, fair leads right up on the bow of the ship and then just coming into view now is the anchor. 
Well, we just follow the uh, bow now, we come up to the very stem in front of the ship. We'll just come into the bow, there's a bit of, uh, bit of anchor chain that the fisherman's lost, there's plenty of this on this wreck. I think that's the uh, top of the anchor looking down into the hawser. Just coming into view there's the anchor windlass, which will be on the very front of the ship for hauling in the anchor. And then uh, not too far behind it is the first cargo winch. It's falling down and it's laying on top of some of the cargo, on top of some of the um, cement bags. as well it seems to have fallen down. The Devon Coast was built for FH Power and Co of Liverpool who run a number of ships all with the name Coast. If they didn't have them built then they had the names changed. Uh, the SS Hanbury became East Coast, SS Creedon became North Coast, SS Thoughtful became Suffolk Coast and so on. You'll see the other cargo winch come into view in a second. On the top of the lot of the old cement bags. Yeah, it's all the cargo there. Launched in April 1905, it only took until the end of June 1905 for the Devon coast to get in trouble. Collided in fog off the Welsh coast with the steamer Terek. The Devon coast slipped back to Liverpool with her starboard bow seriously damaged. She'd had a cargo of cement and some of it had to be thrown overboard to stop the bow from going under. The Terek also made it to uh, Holyhead. We're just about to bump into the donkey boiler and the main boiler. Not sure where that wheel's come from. And that's a single-ended three furnace boiler made by McColl and Pollock of Sunderland. See all the heating rods inside it. Yeah, laying down on the uh, on the ground here is like a folding anchor in their spare anchor. And that's the uh, Blake's Painted Donkey Boiler. sat upright at one point. Very similar to one, if not, I don't know, it might be a Blake's one, I can't remember, but on the SS Ramsgarth one, very similar. So it would have stood upright before, uh, and then it's obviously everything's fallen over to the port side. And this is a bit of a mystery because this looks like the bow anchor, whether it's the bow anchor off the Devon coast or off of the genie that, uh, that hit it, I don't know. It just seems a bit strange that. Why is there a bow anchor up towards the stern, two thirds away along the ship? I did find a few crew names from the Devon coast. In March 1907, Bill Brews aboard the Devon coast while moored in New Haven Harbour 
pinched a pair of boots, a pair of shoes, a razor, a razor case, a pair of pants, three pillowcases, seven pairs of socks, two and a half pounds of soap, a blanket, a cap, a towel, a kit bag, a tidy bag, three pairs of trousers, a bed cover, three sheets, money, a jacket, a glass, I think that was everything, uh, all these items belonging to Stephen John Edwards, an able seaman, and John Doherty, and Hugh McCleavy, uh, he was the boiler man. Bill apologised and said he did it as he was in New Haven, so he was pissed up on Red Stripe. He was pissed, but whether he was on Red Stripe, I don't know. I don't know but he uh, he got he got six weeks in prison for it. We're just swimming over the top of the main boiler now, looking over at the engine, and there's uh, someone's fishing rod they've lost. Just looking back at the boiler, we're between the engine and the boiler at the moment. We've turned around now to look at the um, three cylinder engine. There's the engine with all the connecting rods falling right over onto its port side. It's almost upside down. See all the cords in there. Look, there's another bit of anchor chain hanging down. Someone's lost their another anchor. Yeah, you look down, and then the uh, cylinders are actually right down into the into the seabed. It's a cylinder there, you can sort of see the curve of it. And it's a prop shaft that will be running through the bottom of the engine, which is now the top of the engine. You can see why there's so many anchors and so much fishing line and line all over this wreck. This <laughs> gets well caught up on the... Uh, Crop shaft there, someone's anchor chain hanging around that as well. I don't think they're ever going to get that get that back. That's a prop shaft, obviously snap that's pointing down towards the uh, stern. Somebody else's anchor. <coughs> this is the, uh, the chain from it, all wrapped up. That would have taken some tugging to get that back up there. come across Jamie's little collection of anchors that he found. Yeah, so that's right on the uh, very bottom of the engine, falling right over almost upside down. Just turning around, look behind me now. So I, th I think that's like the keel and all the ribs of the ship. And then we're looking back down towards the stern, back over to the prop shaft. So it points the way. Yeah, we make that make our way down to the stern. I mean, this engine and boiler and everything. It was uh, it was situated more towards the stern of the ship. 
it's still there, 10 foot 6 inches across four blades. Some of them have uh, disappeared down under the sand. Not that sign of the rudder, but the rudder posts and parts of the stone. Cess Devon Coast end up on the seabed, close to Cookmere Haven. Well, pretty much the same thing happened as what occurred in June 1905. It was November the 4th, 1908, in thick fog, with a cargo of cement and some other cargoes. Captain Davies on a voyage from Swanscombe, which I believe is in the Thames near Greenhive, uh, was going to Liverpool. He came into collision with the steamer Genie of Cardiff. Devon coast uh, was cut down to the waterline, but her pumps were put into action, and the Genie towed the Devon coast for three hours before she had to be abandoned and it sank. The crew of 13 were taken aboard the Newhaven Tug Alert and landed at Newhaven. The ship and cargo was valued at £27,000. The genie owned by E.R. Care & Co. was badly damaged. The same night in thick fog, two other steamers had collided in the same area just off Beachy Head, one being the Glasgow steamer Victor. That also had to put in to Newhaven badly damaged, reporting that it's, uh, it saw nothing more of the steamer that it collided with. I thought this might turn out to be one of our unknown wrecks, but after some digging it turned out to be the SS Lavinia of the West Ole Line that she put in uh, further down the coast to assess her damage. FH Powell replaced the Devon coast in 1912 with another W Harkis built ship, SS Graceful, which they again changed the name of to Devon Coast, built in September 1909, but with two boilers. It looks similar to the original. Our mate Kendall MacDonald in his book Dive Sussex says Devon Coast, this one, was built in 1909, uh, 200 feet long with three, uh, four winches. I'm pretty sure he's got this wrong. He's got his Devon Coast mixed up and he's, rest, he's uh, referencing the SS Graceful, the second Devon Coast. Um, there is another Devon Coast, a diesel engine built one that's uh, built up in Scotland in 1936 and sunk in 43. And that's uh, something that's all together. The Devon Coast ex Graceful became the Devonsville, and that ended up as a Sao Pedro until she was scrapped in Argentina in 1952. Right, Jamie's over there. I've marooned him. Can't behave himself, that's what happens. Maroon by who is it? Thomas Selkirk, was it? Is that his name? Selkirk? An inspiration for Robinson Crusoe. Although Jamie's more of a Ben Gunn. Treasure Island. Yar! I don't know if it's picking him up. Get a sense of scale of those cliffs when you see him sitting down underneath there. Just setting his drone up. Hopefully he'll have a bit more luck than he did with it this morning. <laughs> so someone's done a bit of beach art over there, it's like um, Statue of Liberty made out of driftwood. Right, better get ready. down here many times all around the front of this lighthouse it's all scoured uh, quite flat I know there's no big rock sticking up on this bit famous last words
don't know if you've got to go any closer. If I throw him a rope, we'll let him swim. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.